Hey friend, welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. I am your host, Heather. I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. And on this channel, I put all of my old episodes from all of my shows and new episodes too, not just old, as well as loads of extra content like this video right here. Today, we are talking about the most fabulous Lucas de Year. You have probably seen his work, uh, his paintings, if you've been looking at Tudor history for more than, say, a minute. But I want to talk a little bit about his life and some of his less famous paintings that you may not have seen. So Lucas only lived for 50 years, but during that time, he left lasting records of Tudor clothing and spaces that have been invaluable in recreating the world of both the Tudors and the Elizabethans. He was born in Ghent. His father was a sculptor. His mother was actually a miniaturist. So those tiny, tiny little paintings. And for the first 30 years or so of his life, everything was normal. I mean, as normal as it could be, right? He studied in Antwerp. He came back to Ghent where he started his school. He got married to a woman called Eleanor. And then it all went downhill when the Spanish Netherlands, who were mostly Protestant, like to hear himself, revolted against Philip II. This, of course, is the war that later on Philip Sidney would die in, uh, the story that he was fighting in the Spanish Netherlands. He got wounded and he gave up his bottle of water, his flask of water, to someone saying that that person's need was greater than his. And you know, it's very romantic. So this is that fight that was going on. And uh, it was partially a proxy war between England and Spain because Elizabeth was giving money to the Spanish Netherlands to revolt against them because it was you know, keeping the Spanish army busy fighting in the Netherlands. So Lucas de Heer and his family became a refugee of that war. First, he went to France, where he designed tapestries. And then he went to England, where he worked for Edward Clinton, the first Earl of Lincoln. He painted a gallery and also drew costumes of clothing of various nations. After the pacification of Ghent in 1576, he was able to return home, but only for a little bit. He was once again forced to leave in 1584 when Ghent surrendered to the Spanish Habsburg forces. He then died in 1589. So Lucas de Heer gave us some very famous portraits, like the famous family of Henry VII, an allegory of Tudor succession. It's in the National Museum of Wales, and they describe it as, Elizabeth is on the right, holding the hand of peace, followed by plenty. Her father, Henry VIII, the founder of the Church of England, sits on his throne and passes the sword of justice to his Protestant son, Edward VI. On the left are Elizabeth's Catholic half-sister and predecessor, Mary I, and her husband, Philip II of Spain, with Mars, the god of war. This picture was a gift from Queen Elizabeth to Sir Francis Walsingham, exemplifies the 16th century fascination with allegory, the queen's vision of herself as a culmination of the Tudor dynasty, and her concern with the legitimacy of her regime. De Heer also painted for us a very famous painting of Mary I and Philip of Spain, Philip II of Spain, when they were still married. Look at those cute little two doggies down there. They're so cute. I don't know if they're life size or what the scale is with that. Uh, but, you know, it's it's something. And Mary there is also holding the Tudor rose. So that's kind of interesting. But the thing that Lucas De Heer really left us with was a glimpse into everyday life that we don't get from other painters. Check out this drawing from the mid-16th century of London gentlewomen. So we see different classes of London gentlewomen. Look at that one holding the dead chicken or whatever that is. That's, uh, that's interesting. And then we see this painting, two English peers, one in parliamentary robes, one in the robes of the Order of the Garter, with a halberdier in the livery of Elizabeth I. This is from 1567. Look at this beautiful detail. Isn't that just glorious? And then here's a picture of an Irish woman and girl, circa 1575. Remember, Ireland at this time wasn't as close to England as it is now. It was a colony, and the English believed it was inhabited by people who needed civilizing. 
similarly to the way they viewed the Americas a few generations later. So studying their costumes was an important part of documenting their culture. He also traveled a lot in England and gave us this very first ever drawing of Stonehenge. Look at that. And it still has the moat around it. Um, really, really beautiful. And then here he drew a picture of a Venetian courtesan with the veil. It's beautiful. And how amazing is this? A Turkish soldier and his wife. So again, studying all of the different costumes of different nations, different types of people. And this one he drew of his hometown, Ghent, painted around 1562. Isn't that just beautiful? He must have missed it very much. This is a Delhi horseman. Uh, horseman from Delhi. Look at that headdress. So together, this collection of costumes and clothing leaves us with a very vivid picture of how people got dressed in the 16th century throughout much of Europe, India, and Turkey, and gives us insight into the impressions that they would have left on our Tudor friends. What an interesting legacy, huh? So that is Lucas de Heer and some of his paintings. I will put in the description a link where you can view his entire sketchbook. And hey, quick question for you. Do you know how some people, even to this day, say that Anne Boleyn had six fingers? Where does that myth come from? And why on earth do people still talk about it today? That and other myths of the Tudors are what we will be exploring in my five-day Tudor myth-busting challenge, March 25th to 29th. For a whole week, there's going to be five individual videos, each focusing on different aspects of myths of the Tudors. There are two live calls where we'll be digging into it really deep and meeting other new bestie Tudor friends as well as an exclusive online group in my Tudor Learning Circle, which is the internet's only social network just for Tudor fans. All of this and more for just $17. So if you would like to spend five days busting myths about the Tudors, learning more about the Tudors, diving in deep and examining some of your own myths about the Tudors, I would love to see you in my Myth Busting the Tudors challenge from March 25th to 29th. There's a link up on the screen now. I will also put one in the description. Hopefully we will see you in there to spend a week digging deep, diving in, and learning so much more about the 16th century. All right, my friends. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are still here, I sure would appreciate a press of that like button. And I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this on the regular. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Remember, you are deeply loved. I'm so glad I share the planet with you. Don't forget to drink your water, and I will be back soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>